Welcome back to our course in College Algebra. In our last video we discussed a special notation that we use for functions. And remember, College Algebra is all about functions. We're going to discuss different functions that can help us describe different types of relationships between quantities. In this video what we're going to talk about is a very useful tool called the graph of a function. In particular, how to read the graph of a function. Sometimes folks underestimate how useful having the graph of a function is. So let's just dive right into things. So given this example, given this graph, so I've got my x-axis here horizontal, my y-axis is vertical, and this curve is the graph of the function y equals f of x. Now, I haven't given you a formula for this function. I'm just using this picture. I want to evaluate these quantities. Now, one thing I'm going to note is that the graph of a function is the collection of pairs of numbers that have this form. Input, comma, output. Okay, so the graph is the set of all pairs of numbers looking like this. So the x-coordinate of a point on the graph is the input, and the y-coordinate of the point on the graph is the associated output. Alright, so let's jump right into this. f of 2, it's asking us to find the output for the input 2. If you go back to our video on function notation, you'll remember that the quantity in the parentheses here, that's the input to the function. So we're using 2 as the input, and we're being prompted to find the associated output. Now we don't have the formula. We don't have a rule that we can plug 2 into and then do a computation. We only have this picture. Good news is that we look at this picture and we see this point is on the graph. Okay, 2 comma 1 is on the graph. And looking at this definition, of the graph of a function, that means if I use 2 as the input, then I get 1 as the output. So f of 2 equals 1. And that is because the point 2 comma 1 is on the graph. So 2 goes in, 1 comes out. I don't need the formula to find the associated output. The graph is telling me what the associated output is. f of negative 1, okay, so input is negative 1. We look for a point on the graph with negative 1 as the x-coordinate. We see one right here, negative 1, comma, 4. So that is telling us that if negative 1 is used as the input, we get 4 as the output. Negative 1 goes in, 4 comes out f of negative 1 equals 4 because negative 1 comma 4 is on the graph. f of 1, all right, so input is 1. We look on the graph for a point that has 1 as the x-coordinate. 1 comma 0 is on the graph. f of 1 equals 0. f of 0, well, 0 comma 1 is on the graph. f of 0 equals 1. So, these graphs of functions are extraordinarily useful tools for dealing with functions. It completely gets around the need for a computation if you have a well-drawn picture of the function's graph. You can tell which inputs are associated with which outputs. You can also go backwards. All x with f of x equals I don't know, f of x equals 4. Okay, here we are not told what input to use. We're told the output that we want to reach. I want to find all the input values that will give me an output of 4. 
Okay, well, on the graph, the output values are the y coordinates. We already saw one point on the graph that has 4 as its y coordinate, but if we look over here, we see another one. Okay, it looks like this is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the point 3, comma 4. Okay, so if you want to know which x values will give you an output value of 4, well, you could use x equals negative 1, and that'll produce an output of 4, or you could use x equals 3. Okay, so not only can you use a graph to take an input and find the associated output, you could also use a graph to help you solve an equation like this. Okay, here we want to know what x value we should plug in here to make a true statement. What x value can I put in here to get an output of 4? Well, if you, if you got the output, you're looking at the y coordinate. Find a point on the function's graph with y coordinate 4. Or find all the points on the function's graph with y coordinate 4. Take the x values. Those are the values you should plug in to make this a true statement. Okay? So an extraordinarily useful tool, the graph of a function. As we progress through the course, we'll talk about how to take functions of various types, linear, quadratic, polynomial, rational, exponential, logarithmic. We'll talk about how to take functions of various types and draw very good graphs of those functions. We'll also go backwards. We'll talk about how to take a function's graph and figure out the formula that would produce such a graph. Okay, so very useful tool, the graph of a function.